this time of the year, a lot of us will have crops that are growing by leaps and bounds, like pumpkins and tomatoes and cucumbers, and we're either starting to bring in the harvest or we're waiting for them to mature and the harvest to really start kicking in. But if we are on the ball with sowing seeds, we can ensure that we have more crops going into late summer and early autumn and even into winter. And so that is what I'm doing today. I have compost here, I've got some trays, I've got seeds, I've got my seed planning book. And so I'm going to be sowing vegetable seeds for July and sharing with you what I'm sowing. At the beginning of this year, I introduced you to my seed sewing guide. This is just a journal and I've just written in month by month the seeds that I want to sow on the right side and then the types of seeds that I can sow that month divided by the beginning, middle and end. And we're now all the way here in July and again I've got it divided into early, middle and end. And as you can see there's a lot that still can be sown. So while we are preparing for big harvests and probably in an endeavor in preserving a lot of the veg that's coming out of the garden right now, we need to be on the bowl with sowing seeds. And I, I know perfectly what it's like to get really busy and get stuck into projects and holidays and all of that and just not making the time to sow seeds, but it really does pay. So whether you have one pack of seeds or you've got a dozen like me, Get some seeds sown this weekend and you'll be grateful for it in a month, two months, and even longer. Now, I've got all the seeds that I'm planning on sowing this month. I'm not sowing them all, but I'll be introducing them to you. But first of all, my zone. I get asked this regularly, especially by newbies to the channel. There's information in the channel description that tells you a little bit more about the region and the climate that I grow in. But it is approximately 9A if we're going by the US system. I live on the Isle of Man, that's in the British Isles. It is a little bit of a Goldilocks type climate, not too hot, not too cold, and plenty of moisture, plenty of rain, as you can see. So if you are growing in a similar climate, like the Pacific Northwest, you can follow pretty much how I'm sowing, or obviously in Britain, Ireland, parts of Europe. But if you are, say, in a hotter or cooler climate, it may change, so your timings may change. And so that is something that you do need to look into. For the beginning of July, let's go through some of the seeds that I'll be sowing kohlrabi and I've got two different packets here. This one is called green delicacy and then this one is a white and purple mix, the Vienna mix as well. I do love kohlrabi. I was introduced to them when I used to live in Germany. I'd never seen them in the States before then and granted I moved away from the States about 20 years ago so it might be something that's a little bit more common these days. Now, the next one is one that I sow all summer long, but some people can only really sow in spring and then going into late summer for an autumn crop, and that is beetroots. And it's just so mild here in the summer that these do, they do perfectly fine out in the veg patch. Although I know that in warmer climates, they can bolt, they can not produce, they're just a problematic type of crop. But for me, July is an okay time to sow beetroots. Lettuce. Oh my goodness, we have so much lettuce out in the garden right now. Massive heads of the red salad bowl type in particular. And also some of this Morton secret mix, which I love growing. It's from a, a local organic seed company. It's, I think, based out of Wales. So I say local, it's in the British Isles. And it's a good mix. It's a surprise as to what type of salad green or what type of lettuce comes out of it but even though I have a lot of lettuce out in the garden right now it is going to go to seed relatively soon and so I need to be on the bowl and sow more seeds if we want to have lettuce. Endive. This is one that I've never grown before. I've had it before 
quite a, a bitter type of green from what I recall. It's on the menu this year because I had that experience recently of not growing broad beans because I thought I didn't like them. And then lo and behold, I did. And with the broad beans, I did autumn sown last year. They're just finishing up now. I've just frozen, so parboiled and frozen, most of what's left. And so there's going to be space freed up soon for all of these crops that I'm starting off this month. Also, chard, Swiss chard. This is bright lights. I don't know if you can see from the front. There we go. A mixed color. And this will actually stand proud and tall and leafy and lots and lots of food over the winter as well as autumn and throughout the growing year. So this is one that is a staple in British gardens. Another, which is a staple, is perpetual spinach. And it grows and is related to chard, but you use it a little bit more like a spinach than as a chard. It's not as strong flavored when it's young in particular. Winter cabbage. The first week of July is the last time I can sow them for a, a decent winter crop. And I do have some of this January King that I sowed last month, but not nearly enough. And so I'm going to sow some more of this, but you can also sow Savoy cabbage seeds as well, which is a good winter cabbage. All of the seeds that I've introduced thus far, these are seeds that I can sow today. So they are in my beginning of July section of my seed sowing schedule. I've got a good couple of weeks for most of them, but I can sow them today or any time that I have time. Now, going into the middle of the month. As we go into the middle of July, we're starting to really take off the table any crops that need a long growing period. In, and in the middle of July, that is the last time really that you can sow carrots outdoors. So this is a type called Speedo and true to its name, it crops a lot quicker. I think it's five to 10 days quicker than other varieties. And then after the middle of this month, carrots are off the table as are most types of crops that fruit or develop really big roots or that need a long growing period. But what we can start thinking about are leafy greens like coriander and chervil and wild rockets. Leafy greens generally don't take as long to crop. They also enjoy rainy types of climates, cooler climates and as they start growing and as we start going into August, at least here, we can get some really cool weather coming in. And if you're in a warmer climate, you might want to hold off just a little bit. When you're thinking about crops to sow towards the end of summer, start thinking about it as a second spring. Autumn isn't necessarily the end of the growing year. It can be the beginning for a lot of those leafy greens. I also have here Chinese cabbage, so Wong Bok. And also, I mentioned chervil already, landcress is another one. Really quick to crop, so there's a, a good handful of things for the middle of July. As we go into the end of July, there is another root vegetable that I can sow, especially if I harvest the turnips when they are quite small. So this is a Milan purple top turnip. So you can sow those as well. Also winter radishes you can sow in July as well. So the black Spanish radish that I've shown you before and also a lot more of the Asian green vegetables. And I've got pak choy here and also tat soy. Those are great to sow at the end of July. And then we also have rockets. So this is ordinary arugula rather than wild rockets. Salad leaf. So salad leaf is just any type of leafy green vegetable that you would put in a salad. It's not a particular type of vegetable. It's just a salad leaf mix here. So anything that might be considered a leafy green. So uh, mustard, also lettuces, baby spinach, things like that you can sow at the end of July. Radishes, you can start getting those back in if you haven't been sowing them since the spring. 
spinach as well. Now spinach can be problematic because if it's really hot in the summer, it just goes to seed almost immediately after coming up. So if you want to mitigate the risk of that, get a variety like mat Matador or another one that deals with heat a little bit better. It doesn't bolt as easily. I think I've mentioned mustard already, but here's a packet of it, just a spicy salad green. And I also have sorrel, lovely green vegetable, has a oxalic acid kick to it. And then I have another green vegetable here, green boy Japanese greens. So lots of leafy green vegetables for the end of July. So today I'm going to be sowing that first mix, so those first few seed packets, and then waiting a little bit longer for the middle ones and then finishing off with, with these seed packets that I've just gone through. So there's a lot of seeds, there's a lot of vegetables to start in July. And it feels almost like late March, early April again with a lot of those veg. And so you can recycle them, use those same veg, start them off both at the beginning and towards the end of the growing year. And then that way you have double the harvest and so you can revisit those crops again. So as you've just seen, I have quite a few seeds that I need to sow and I've got my kappa, I've got my little station set up in here. So this will keep me busy for the next hour or so. And I'm not going to go through step by step how I sow seeds into modules because I've gone through that in a couple of videos already, including one that I shared with you earlier this year. So I'll pop a link up on the screen and also down in the video description if you'd like to go and check out that video next. Now, if you are sowing seeds other than any that I've already listed this month, and it could be vegetables, it could be herbs, it could be flowers, let us know in a comment down below. Give us some ideas for other things to add to the list. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any questions or comments down below as well. And I'll see you next week for another video here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.